Good evening and a warm welcome to Empowering You for Victory. Moin and I send our fondest love greetings to every one of you online. We are studying in this season, understanding God's unfolding revelation of His purposes for man and the earth. Understanding God's unfolding revelation of His purposes for man and also for the earth. For tonight, I would like you to be assured from the Word of God that the Word of God will never pass away. The Word of God will never fail to produce when you believe it, when you put your trust in the Word. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Praise God for the reading of his word. As long as you can see the earth and see the heavens, as long as there's an earth and a heavens, you need to be assured that the word of God will never pass away. And Jesus said, even if the earth passes away, and even if the heavens pass away, his words will never pass away. So here in the midst of a changing world, when the, where the only constant we have in life is change, we have an unchanging God, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have an unchanging, unfailing Word of God that we can live by. We've looked at what Jesus said in Matthew 4 and verse 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, meaning you cannot live this life by natural means, only natural means like money, like education, like your health, like your medicine, or your doctors, or your lawyers. Now all those factors have got an important part to play in our lives. Don't, don't take me wrong, but you cannot live by that alone. He's not saying you cannot live by that. He says, you cannot live by that alone, but you live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, there are necessary things we've got to do to live an excellent life, to be successful, and to be an achiever in life. But on its own, you won't make it, because Everything is subject to change. But the Word of God is not subject to change because the Word of God created everything and the Word of God sustains everything. So if you anchored on that which created that which fluctuates and the Word of God upholds everything that was created, then we are on safe ground to be anchored on the Word of God. In Numbers 23, 19, God's Word says, God is not a man. You must settle that. God is not a man, even though He became a man to experience our life, but God is not a man for the purpose that He should lie. Man tells lies. Man tries to be politically correct. Man tells you things that they want you to know and don't tells you, tell you things that they don't want you to know. So God doesn't work like that at all. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. When it gets to God, you've got to understand that God is not changing his mind like man changes his mind. Man can support you one day and reject you the next day. God never does that. He's not a man that he should lie. He'll never tell you lies. If God tells you he's going to come through for you, 
He's going to come through for you. He just needs you to believe him and to trust in what he says. He's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So he's not a man that changes his mind. Man changes their minds about who they love, who they accept, who they help, who they don't want to help, who they want to be friends with, who they don't want to be friends with, who their inner circles are. Jesus it doesn't work like that at all. And he does not repent. And then once you settle that, has he said it then? And will he not do it? Has he spoken it? And will he not bring it to pass? He's asking you and I a question. He first tells us what he won't do. Then he asks us in light of what he said he won't do. That when he speaks something, will he not do it? Had he said it then? What's going to stop him from doing it after telling you what he won't do? Had he said it and will he not do it? And has he spoken it and will he not make it good? I mean, just think about it throughout the Bible, the whole of creation. God has never spoken something that he never made it good. So God wants you to know, family, that the unfolding of history is a set up, even though the devil is trying to destroy and distort. But God is setting history up for his purposes and his outcomes that at the end of the day, the end of the book, his purposes will prevail for our lives. So even when we don't have control, God still has control. And he's working for an end result, which is his plans and his, his purposes. Now the Bible has a wonderful beginning. This book, the Bible, is a revelation of God and a revelation of God's unfolding purposes for you and I and for the earth. So always know that, family, that when you're dealing with the Word of God, it's a revelation of who God is being unveiled to you and I. But it's also a revelation of His plans and purposes for your life and also a revelation of his plans and purposes for the earth and for creation. It has a wonderful beginning, but it also has a glorious ending. If you just understand that the Bible is a journey of revelation, of unfolding revelation. So it's a journey. You have a beginning and an end. It is, has a wonderful beginning. It has a a more glorious ending, but it also has a middle part as well. And it's important for us to understand that because when you embark on a journey in the natural, you need to know where you're starting from. You also need to know what's going to happen somewhere in the middle somewhere. And then you need to know well, how you, what's the end of the journey? Where are you going to? What are you going to get to in this journey? Where are you going to? What are you going to achieve? What are you going to have? And what's going to happen in the end? So you understand that this unfolding of God's revelation of his purposes for man, revelation of him, his purposes for man and the earth, what's that all about? Genesis, the first book of the Bible is the book of beginnings. That's where you need to start if you're going to embark on a journey of revelation. I say that Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3 is the seed bed of all revelation. So the Word of God in those two to three chapters 
is seeds that are planted of revelation that will continue to unfold throughout the Bible because chapter 3 speaks about the fall of man and then everything after that is pointing to the recovery of man from the fall for the purpose that God, God's purposes will continue to, to unfold. So when God created, in fact, Genesis 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven, heavens and the earth. So there's more than one heaven. We know there's at least three heavens because Paul was caught up unto the third heaven. So we go to the beginning of the revelation and yet the Bible says in the beginning God created. So if you want to embark on this journey, you must embrace the revelation of God as creator. Not only of earth but of heaven. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. Before God created, God was always there. So creation is not the beginning of God, it's the beginning of creation. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then God put order into creation before he formed man and breathed his breath into man. He put order to govern creation. He put natural laws and he put spiritual laws into the earth and into the heavens so that both the earth and the heavens and man's outcome is governed by laws. Natural laws and spiritual laws. And there's laws of success, laws of health, laws of money, laws of education. There's all different laws in the universe that if you break them, they'll break you. They, they are unfisted laws. You cannot break a law that God put into the universe and think it won't break you. So we got to be respectful and honorable to natural laws and to spiritual laws. Once God brought order, then we pick it up from verse 26. We're talking about the beginning of the revelation of God and the unfolding purposes of God for you, for me, and for the whole earth. Very important. Revelation is more powerful than knowledge because it's out of that revelation you will get vision and get imagination. And Albert Einstein, the father of modern day science, he said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. So revelation gives you vision, it gives you pictures, it gives you dreams. And so there's a faculty of the mind that the spirit works with called imagination for you to know God's purposes and God's intentions. So God said in Genesis 1:26, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion, verse 27. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he, him. And then male and female, he created them. He first created man, and out of man, he took Eve out, brought Eve to man, he created them. God starts with the beginning, he creates one, and out of one, he brings many. And that is very powerful for you to see that. But as soon as God created man in his image and his likeness, both male and female, he created them, then he blessed them. And this was a blessing. The blessing of God is released through the words of God. God speaks words to bless man. And God blessed man. And God said to them, 
Thank God you included there. Number one, be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Number three, replenish the earth. Number four, subdue the earth. And all that put together have dominion. And so family, I want to stop there. As we embark on this beautiful journey of the unfolding purposes of God for your life, my life, and the whole earth. Let me recap it and I'll pray for you. Always know that in the beginning God, in fact John 1 tells us before the beginning there was God. So God has no beginning, but creation has a beginning. And so we understand in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So we as Christians embrace the creation's record in Genesis and not the scientific Big Bang theory. With all your education, all the scientific knowledge, science hasn't been able to find God. So knowledge, education, does not give you an ability as wonderful as it is to find God. And you need to be wise in your studies that even though you will pass with flying colors and get your distinctions, but you know what you believe. We believe in the creation story and you will have wisdom of God that even though you are not contentious with signs and you need to understand how the unsaved scientists actually think and you will pass your examinations that way because you, you need an education. But your education must never affect your core beliefs. You must separate that from your core beliefs. Your core beliefs is you believe in God being a creator. Praise the Lord. You don't come from a monkey and you don't come from a big bang. God is a God of plan, God of purpose and God of intentions. And that's how we relate to God. That's the beginning of our journey. So he not only created, he put order into creation for the sake of productivity. So creation can work properly. So God has a kingdom in heaven. He governs heaven by laws. And God has a kingdom that's coming onto the earth and he's governing creation by natural laws and spiritual laws. And it's after that that he created man. And that shows us that whatever God created, he created for man. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth is given to the sons of men. So the earth is our inheritance, even though it still belongs to God. We are stewards. And God has put into the earth vast, vast wealth, undiscovered treasures for you to mine them so we can make poverty history and serve God with our wealth and serve the purposes of God for humanity with our wealth. And there'll always be more than enough for you. But never allow people to manipulate because that is witchcraft. People need to always be di directed to trust God as their source. As soon as you manipulate another human being, you operate in witchcraft. That is a devilish earthly wisdom. Please, family, don't put pressure on relationships to manipulate people. It'll catch up with you and it'll block your prosperity. God richly bless you. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Allow me to pray for you. Father, we want to thank you for all our online viewers today. I pray for them all, Lord Jesus, that they will know you as this great God, a creator, 
a redeemer and a God that is so powerful, so magnificent, so mighty, and that, Lord, you created us to be like you and to do like you. And you empowered us too, Lord, that we would rule the works of your hands, your creation. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. Seal this word in our heart as we continue on this journey of revelation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Bye-bye. Why CBCI? It's very rare for you to find a Bible college where the founder has over 45 years of ministry experience. When I wanted to choose a Bible college, it was obvious CBCI would be the right place for me to strengthen my walk with God, build my faith, and be intellectually stimulated. Do you have a thirst to serve God like you've never served Him before? Do you have a fire that wants to be unleashed in 2022? You need to register at CBCI to elevate your faith, strengthen your walk with God, and unleash the passion that you have inside of you for the Lord Jesus.